I have an Olympus G Zuiko Auto W 28 millimeter f 3.5 lens here that I'm going to be fully disassembling. This lens is actually quite similar to the other Olympus lens that I've previously disassembled, the 50 millimeter uh, 1.8 right here. Uh, and they're about the same size, and internally the construction is almost identical as well. There are a few differences. Obviously, the optics are laid out differently on the wider angle one. But uh, overall, the mechanical layout and everything is very similar between the two. What I'm going to be doing is fully disassembling this lens to get access to the optics, diaphragm, um, and all the mechanical sections and the body sections on their own as much as possible. I'll start by going in from the front of the lens and getting access to the diaphragm. And on the front here, on this name ring going around on the outside, there are two little divots for a spanning wrench on either side. But even using a pointed tip spanning wrench like this, uh, these tips are too large for this. So you'd either have to have one with finer tips or file uh, the tips of the spanning wrench down to be able to use it here. Or you can use a, something like a piece of pipe. I have a pipe here with little rolls of gaffer's tape on it that I'll use to actually unscrew this. So I can just stick that on and that will safely unscrew the front without leaving any residue behind. So this removed the name ring and then the next ring is this black ring which the filters and things screw into. Also just sitting on there very similar in this layout in the front to the 50 millimeter. And then there's the next black colored ring here which actually has the grooves for the um, when they move the aperture back and forth, you can see the little ball bearing right there actually that makes the clicking sound. So this is just sitting in there loosely as well and I'll remove it. That ring. And now we have the aperture control ring itself right down here with the little ball bearing over here. It's making the clicking sound. And this is also just sitting loosely in the lens so I can remove that um, and be careful not to lose the little ball bearing over there. Next, I can see that I have access to the front optical pieces right here. Um, and the lower sections here have the two little levers that were actually coupling the aperture control ring on either side into the diaphragm mechanism. Unlike the 50 millimeter, there is one lever on either side. So there are two places where this is being coupled, the aperture control ring. So I'm going to remove the optics here first. Um, and in this piece, there's the front section here and then two lower rings. And the lower ring here has two divots for a spanning wrench. And this, you can use a pointed tip spanning wrench or a regular spanning wrench to just undo this because it's uh, larger gaps for the spanning wrench to fit into. You can see the size of the front optical piece. It's a, a different kind of layout um, than on the 50 millimeter lens with much more optical piece, with many more optics in front and then a much smaller back optical piece. Now I have access to this next ring um, and the front of the diaphragm down here and all the mechanical parts. So if I go in and stop this down. There we go. So I can actually get access to the front of the diaphragm at this stage. And I don't know if there's an easy way to actually get access to the back of the diaphragm um, on its own. The only way I found how to do it was to remove the entire diaphragm mechanism and so it can be cleaned on its own. I wasn't able to remove the back glass here. Uh, there's two little spots for a spanning wrench, but that only undoes a small little cover and leaves the glass in place. Um, but because you can kind of easily remove the actual diaphragm mechanism itself, that's not too much of a problem. Continuing on with the front disassembly, I have the sections that are actually coupling the aperture control ring into the diaphragm mechanism. So as I move this back and forth, um, these little couplers, which would be simulating the aperture control ring being rotated, uh, the, you can see that down inside the mechanical sections, there's this little post here. Um, and this body section um, has a little curve here. So as I rotate this around, that little post moves along the curve. So that's the aperture control curve. And I'm just moving it back and forth, which opens and closes the aperture uh, when I was holding the stop down lever. So I'm going to undo this top ring and expose a few more of the mechanical pieces on the next level. And 
it's just held in place by these two couplers that go from the inside here to the outside, these two metal bars. So I'm gonna undo both of these bars. They have two screws on either side, remove both bars, and I'll be able to lift out this uh, center first piece. Now I can just grab this top piece, lift that out, and set that aside. So now I have access to the front of the mechanical sections in here. So if there are any mechanical problems, you could kind of easily repair those at this stage. But what I actually want to do now is get access to the back of the diaphragm as well. And like I said, you can't just remove the back optical piece, you actually have to remove the entire diaphragm as far as I know. So I'll start on the back of the lens by removing the mounting plate right in here. Uh, it's just is held in place by these three screws. Uh, and I'll remove these and then lift off the mounting plate. And on the mounting plate itself, it's like the 50 millimeter, um, this has the mechanical parts here, the springs that's actually holding things open, um, and it has two components. It has the actual mounting plate piece, the silver section, and then the black intersection that rotates around and it has, I believe, the aperture control indicator. So the mounting plate itself has the stop down lever over here, um, and the aperture control indi indicator is on a separate piece in here. Um, and you can get access to these on their own by removing this back black plate here. But because that undoes all these different little springs and things, I would recommend against doing that unless there are actually mechanical problems with this piece. It's very similar actually to the 50 millimeter, so you can pretty much follow the same instructions on the reassembly of this piece. The important thing is that during the reassembly, you have the longer metal bar over here by the spring and then the short black bar on the other uh, opening over here, and that one springs back because it's held open by the spring over here. So that's really the only difference on the reassembly. Looking at this back section again, um, you can see I have the focusing ring up here, and then the back optical piece, and this is the entire diaphragm mechanism right in here. So I'm just gonna remove the diaphragm mechanism um, and that whole body section from the lens. It's held in place by these three screws going around here, the little black screws. Now I can just lift off the focusing ring. And that separates the focusing mechanism from the diaphragm, larger diaphragm mechanism. So I'll set this aside, and really what I want to be able to separate now is I want to get the, I want to actually remove just the mechanical parts and the diaphragm from this larger piece so that it can be cleaned as best as possible on its own. Uh, and to do that, I'm just going to remove these three black screws going around here, and that should loosen up the mechanical section in here and the diaphragm itself. Like the 50 millimeter, the diaphragm and mechanical sections are coupled together, so it's a little bit harder to clean. You actually have to take the diaphragm apart if you want to clean it well. All right, so now I have, there should be three little uh, silver washers on the back section here that are the screws we're actually going into, set those aside, and set this one aside as well. And now I have the diaphragm piece on its own, um, and this has all the mechanical couplings as well. So it's a fairly complicated piece. The way you would clean this better, um, since this has the mechanical sections that you really don't want to get a uh, cleaning solution on, you can either have, hold this open and just clean the top sides of the blades here, or on the back section here, you undo these three screws and remove the back plate, and um, then you can remove the individual blades and clean those on their own and then reassemble the lens. One last part of the disassembly here. I will uh, detach the focusing ring that's going around here from the actual focusing mechanism itself. And like on the 50 millimeter, the way that this is held in place is under this rubber ring going here. I can just remove this ring, rubber gripping ring, set that aside. You, there are four little screws that are actually holding the focusing ring onto the focusing mechanism and locking that down. So this does actually make zeroing the lens back to infinity pretty easy because you can put the entire lens back together um, and just to have the, just uh, uh, loosen up the, take off the rubber ring and loosen these up. Uh, and zero it back. So I'm going to undo these four little screws.
And now this piece will just lift off. So I have the focusing mechanism right over here and then the focusing ring on its own as well. So that has the disassembly of the lens complete where I have separated the body sections such as the aperture control ring, focusing ring, um, and some of the other ones like the rubber gripping ring and mounting plate as much as reasonably possible for this disassembly um, from everything else like the optics in here which can be further disassembled a little bit using the, um, you can undo these other rings on the optical pieces and undo those. And the mechanical sections such as the diaphragm and the focusing ring here. The uh, reassembly of this lens is also very straightforward, uh, very similar to the 50 millimeter 1.8. I'll start off by just getting the uh, focusing ring back on in any orientation really uh, just so that it's locked in place and later I'll explain how you zero the lens back to infinity um, but as I mentioned it's very easy on this type of lens because uh, you don't have to only partially assemble it you can put the entire lens back together except for the black rubber gri uh, gripping ring and actually zero the lens back that way Next up, I'm going to get the diaphragm mechanism back into this piece right here. So the larger diaphragm assembly. Um, and on the diaphragm mechanism, flipping it onto the back side here, uh, it had the three little like, silver washers that the screws are actually going into. Uh, unlike the 50 millimeter, these kind of um, have two different sides to them. They have a little bit of a, a ledge on them. Um, and you want it to slide these in so that they go under the black ring in here from the side rather than just putting them in from the top like on the 50 millimeter. And now looking in at this piece here, um, it has two gaps. It has this longer one over here and then a larger one over here with the gap on both the intersection and the other outer section right here. And the little lever here, which is actually the stop down lever for this lens, needs to go into this larger gap. So it lines up, it's gonna line up like this on the back side here. So I'm just gonna feed this up from the back, oh, feed this up from the back side um, and get this lined up once again. Make sure that the little washers on the back section are still in place and thread in the three screws going around here to lock these two sections together once again. Next up to just kind of complete the reassembly of this diaphragm mechanism, I'm going to get the uh, part that's actually uh, coupling the aperture control ring to the diaphragm in place. So this ring over here. Uh, and this has the two little bars on either side that go through these two slots right on either side there and are getting coupled down by the two screws here. And it also has the uh, aperture control curve. And the little bars are going through the slots on this main piece on either side here. The way this needs to line up is the little bar or the little post here, this little silver one, needs to go in front of the aperture control curve. So I can get this lined up like this, just slide this in place to start off with. And then once this is in place, I don't actually have this in front of the aperture control curve, it's still a little bit behind. So I need to push over this slightly from the inside. So it's actually, this sits down flat. And when I move this back and forth, this post should be going in front of the curve. Uh, and I can just put this down in this little pocket here where it's not actually on the curve for the moment and reattach this section using the two bars that go in from either side. So what I should see as I move these two posts back and forth, it rotates freely and as I 
move it back and forth as well, that little post is moving back and forth along that curve. Now I'll position the diaphragm mechanism back into the lens body here and get this lined up. The diaphragm mechanism has these two slots, one with the back, uh, black post that's for the stop down lever on this side and one that's actually the aperture control indicator so it slides back and forth with the aperture ring. And this back section here has two little gaps in it as well so these gaps should line up with the two uh, slots in here for the mechanical sections. I'll slide these two together and then just couple them together using the three screws going around here. All right, so on the back section to complete the reassembly, I need to get the mounting plate back on. And the mounting plate has the two indicators I showed before. It has the long post here, which is actually the aperture control indicator, and then it has the shorter black post on this side, which is the stop down lever. So the aperture control indicator needs to go up into, let me line these up, um, into this little gap in here in the aperture control ring. And then the stop down lever needs to go in front of this little black post on this side so that it can hit that when I move it back and forth and actually stop down the lens. So I can get, line this up with the aperture control first and then I should be able to lock that down and get the three screws lined up as well on the uh, back section here. That completes the back reassembly and moving on to the front section. First I'll get the aperture control ring back in place. Uh, it has two little uh, forks inside here that actually sit on top of the bars on either side that we installed before uh, so that it can couple back and forth. So I'll get these lined up properly. And for this actually it needs to also line up so that the numbers are closer to the side over here um, where the aperture control or the focusing indicator is. So I'm going to line it up that way. And now when I move this back and forth you should see the little curve down there and the little post move back and forth as well. Next up I'll line up the first ring here, this just metal piece that sits on top of this aperture control ring and makes the clicking sound. So it should have the grooves over by the ball bearing. Um, and then there's a little section that sticks out here. And on this section here, there's a little gap. And those two lock together so that this stays in place while the aperture control ring rotates. And then comes the Um, next ring here, the filter ring holder, which also just has a little uh, bar right here that uh, sits in the same slot as the uh, clicking ring. And then I'll reinstall the front optical piece right here. It just is going to screw into place down inside the lens. And I'll use the pointed tip spanning wrench to lock this one down. And finally, to lock all those pieces in place, I'll reinstall the name ring in the front section here. Just screws in place as well, uh, and you can use the little divots on either side to lock it down. Um, and loosen up all these little screws after that's done, and then spin this ring around um, on the filter ring, the filter ring around, so that it's set to infinity properly. And once that's set up, then you can spin the ring back around um, so and lock it down at the correct position. All right, so that has the reassembly complete of this lens. Make sure that everything's working properly, stop down lever, uh, aperture control ring, focusing all that. Overall, this lens is very similar in its construction to the 50mm 1.8 lens that I've taken apart before. 
Um, and internally it uses very similar construction techniques. A few were just minor differences, but it's almost exactly the same internally. Uh, so if you've taken the other one apart before, it's a very similar lens to uh, repair. It is a very repairable lens, uses high quality parts for the most part. Uh, the only real challenge is getting everything to lock back into the correct positions.